Podcast welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. At the Metrodome in Minneapolis. About set to start to see who the fourth team's going to be. They're going to play Atlanta, the winner of this game. Congratulations to Bill Parcells, New York Jets. They'll play Denver next week. The winner of this one will play Dan Reeves, Atlanta Falcons. And congratulations to Dan Reeves and the Atlanta Falcons. We talk about the Vikings having a super year and a great year and a Cinderella team. Atlanta Falcons were the same thing. And what a job Dan Reeves and his coaching staff and his players have done. Well, Dan Reeves, you can't say enough good things about him. It's good to see good things happen to good people. And Dan Reeves is good people. Chris Jackie will kick it off. He's been the hero in Arizona for the last few weeks. They won seven games in the closing second to get here. David Palmer will start handling the ball for Minnesota. Palmer to the 20 and down at about the 19. Let's look at the Minnesota offense as tempers are, are on the edge, I think you'd have to say. The offense led by Randall Cunningham. This is the second Randall Cunningham. His offensive line, they've been together five years. They're very effective. Led by Randall McDaniel and Todd Stucy on the left side. Jeff Christie also a key. Robert Smith, Charles Evans, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, and Andrew Glover will handle the ball for the Minnesota offensive coordinator Brian Billick. Of course his name has been mentioned prominently in all the coaching changes from this year. He'll be a head coach somewhere. Cardinals blitz. They almost get to Cunningham. He dumped it. They have said they're going to blitz just about every play. Yeah, that's, they're going to go after Randall Cunningham. That's their defensive line. They'll start with a four man front. But they'll make changes and many changes in that. The three linebackers, Patrick Sapp starting, McKinnon and Jameer Miller, who had a big week last week against Dallas. Chavis and Williams, the corners. And Dave McGinnis. He too mentioned when people start searching for head coaches. Flags fly. You see Simeon Rice, he was out there and he was he, he was jumping all around because he knows it's against Todd Stucy, the left tackle. False start. Number 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Not and necessarily a good start for Minnesota. Well, it was an interesting thing that the, the Cardinals use a lot of five defensive linemen, and they did it a lot last week against the Dallas Cowboys. And on that last play, that was a five defensive lineman. In fact, you see it here. Well, now they're in four defensive linemen. Second and 15, Carter comes in motion. Cunningham has caught by Chris Carter. He was covered pretty well. You know, Chris Carter is one of those guys that you know, is, is, is a big, strong, physical receiver. And, and he gives Randall Cunningham so much confidence that, that you know that once you have this guy here and you just throw the ball in there, that, that he is going to go and fight and usually end up with it. And that's exactly what he did. He just found the hole in the zone, and Randall Cunningham threw it perfectly. David Palmer comes into the Minnesota backfield. On third down, here come the flags again as the Cardinal jump free play. Pass complete to Palmer. And they're going to take the play instead of the flag, except the play never got started, did it? Yes, it did get started did. because it would be the defense that jumped. Now, if the defense jumps, it's a free offensive play. If the offense moves, then they blow the whistle. So that, as you said, was a free play. Number 74. Defense. Oh, you're exactly right. And they were Randall, game. Randall Cunningham M knew that and he just he just stood in there and he had David Palmer you see David Palmer coming out of the backfield Randall Cunningham stood patiently and threw the ball game. here's the Minnesota version of no huddle they're up and quickly ready to go and the Cardinals again come on the blitz and Robert Smith 
gets the carry. Patrick Sapp got there almost the same time the ball did. You know, this is the same thing that they did against the Dallas Cowboys. Is what they want to do is, is get the pressure right in here, right now. If we just start, you see, you want to step up. See how they step up? Then they want to hit the gap. You see, right here, you don't want to give it away yet, but you want to get up there and hit the gap after they have counted you as being back off. And that's exactly what Sapp did. He timed it perfectly. Second and 14. Single setback is Smith. Cunningham drops, has time, has caught. Chris Carter again struggles for a first down. I think that was one of the things that the Vikings have. As I said earlier, they're going to move the ball around, and, and they know that the, the Arizona Cardinals are going to take away Randy Moss. They're putting Aeneas Williams out there. They were playing him with a lot of nickel. So if you're going to concentrate on Randy Moss, what better guy to go to than Chris Carter? Here's Williams out with Randy Moss. And here's Robert Smith. And he can turn a shortly designed play into a first down, and he does. You know, and that's exactly what we're talking about. You know, you talk about the weapons, and here they go, and they're running, and, you know, I mean, they're throwing out there to Chris Carter, they're throwing the ball to Palmer, and then they say, well, it's about time we get a run in here, <laughs> and they just hand it to Robert Smith. And watch, not only the running and the vision he has, but the but the run blocking. This, this offensive line, the Minnesota Vikings, is the best offensive line right now in pro football. Leroy Hard is down the deep back. He's in there as a load runner and a blocker. And he is a load. Hard struggles for about four. Andre Wadsworth. You know, he said he said about a month ago, he said, I'm the type of back if if you need a yard, I'll get you three yards. If you need five yards, I'll get you three yards. But, you know, but but he's even more than that. I mean, every time you say that, he can also break one through and get that 20 or 30 yard gain. And once he breaks through into the secondary, there's not a lot of anxious defensive backs to tackle them. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And I, if I were a defensive back, I think I'd agree. Here's Robert Smith again. Puts his head down and gets about three. This is a fine offensive line and I think one of the keys John we've talked about it often is that they've been together as a unit for about five years. Yeah and that's where it all starts. I mean if you don't have that if you don't have this group right here then you can have all the Randy Mosses and Chris Carter's and Robert Smith's and all those guys you want. But it's very academic because the first thing that happens is these guys have to block third and one. Look who the quarterback is. David Palmer. Could be a direct snap to him. He can throw it as well as run with it. He got the first down. See what they did is they came in and they switched. They put Randall Cunningham, the quarterback, out as a split left end. And then they put Palmer as, the, as a quarterback. Yep. And he just got in a shotgun. Here's Randall Cunningham. He's out here. And here's Palmer right here. You see, and they just... And they just snap it. They just snap it to Palmer. Now he starts out, and this this is going to be a run here. But I watched him in practice the other day, and they also have a pass off of that with yep. Palmer throwing the ball. Yep. Shades of the old single wing or the A formation. Yep. You got to watch these Minnesota Vikings. I'll tell you. Smith hit right at the line of scrimmage by Ronald McKinnon. Give us to Robert Smith. You know, and, and you know the thing is we talk about these Vikings and, and all the weapons they have and it all starts with that offensive line. But Brian Billick does a great job of calling this game too because it really does. you can have weapons but if you don't use them and mix them up and, and become one dimensional you're easy to defend. The way Brian Billick is mixing these things up in this first drive is darn near really impossible to defend. Smith is the deep back. Cunningham rolls and gets it out to Smith. Inside the five to the three. Lassiter. But is Randall. You know, this is this is something Randall Cunningham is really starting out this game calm. You know, 
A lot of times quarterbacks start out and they're a little anxious early in the game. This is a bootleg. He fakes to the left, comes out here to the right, and just that easy touch pass out there to Robert Smith. You know, Randall Cunningham, the way he's playing now, he can throw every type of pass. With, with feel, with touch. Uh, when you have to throw it up and let somebody run in, he can do it. Yeah, but he's so calm. Yeah. I mean, it looks like everyone is going hyper around him. He's just staying calm in there. Boy. About the half yard line. That's the that's the three yards he got. You need a yard, I'll get you three. I would say that they leave Leroy Hoard in there again. And you know, Robert Smith is more of a slasher and he'll get you the big plays. Leroy Horde is your pound guy that runs inside and gets you that short yardage. Yep. And he's usually the guy, if they run, that gets the ball, or if they don't run, they fake it to him. Nine year veteran from Michigan. Two tight ends set up this time. Carter stays in. Horde goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. It looks so simple and get it done with such ease. And if you're a defensive coordinator, where do you start to stop them? I, don't I mean, know. They, 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 this drive was surgery. The Minnesota Vikings did surgery on the Arizona Cardinal defense, and they did it every way you can with darn near every weapon they have, and they haven't even used Randy Moss yet. That's so true. They have a train load of weapons. 7 nothing Minnesota. They took seven minutes plus. Yeah, Minnesota 7, Arizona nothing. And the dome, as we expected, exploded when Leroy Hard took it into the end zone. These people love these Vikings. I mean, look at this crowd. They're giving them a standing ovation yeah. now. They're all waving the white towels. Now we're talking. Line drive kick. Handled by Eric Metcalf. Metcalf up to about the 27 in the Cardinal offensive unit. Will come on for the first time. 7-0. Vikings over the Cardinals. That's the Arizona defensive line in a state of shock, I suppose, right at the moment. Joe Green, the great Joe Green talking to him. Yeah, because they tried everything on defense and nothing even slowed up that Viking offense. Plummer gives to Adrian Morrell, who can't find any place to go. Let's look at the Cardinal offense. Led by Jake the Snake. He has really come on. Jake Plummer. The offensive line in front of him, Brown, Dishman, Graham, Holmes, and Dexter. And Adrian Morrell deep. Larry centers the veteran. They go with the hurry huddle. The at the line and almost picked off. Almost picked off by Corey Fuller. Here's the Minnesota defense. They are very quick. Randall, particularly in the front four. And so are the linebackers, Rudd, McDaniel, and Dixon Edwards. Cardinals again go at the line. That's the secondary. And they're ready to go in a hurry. Third and long. Plummer backs out. And now comes back, and here comes the flag. The noise is, no question about it, a factor. In fact, they were talking before the game that that was the thing that they worried about was hearing the snap count specifically on shotgun. Tom White is the referee. And you see what Jake Plummer tried to do. He, he tried to get into T formation, then he tried to get into shotgun, then he couldn't hear, so he tried to get back up under center, and in doing all those things, time ran out on him. Third and 16, and you need to be very careful right here. Don't take too many gambles, Jake. They'll put this game out of reach in a hurry. High intended for Frank Sanders. 
Let's check out. We have Ron Pitts with us, and he's down on the field. Let's check out with Ron Pitts how loud it is. Pat, it is extremely loud down here, and I'm on about the 20-yard line, right even with the with the Cardinals. And I tell you, there's no way that uh, Jake Plummer's offense could hear him make that call. That's one reason he tried to get back under the center. It is just deafening. Battle for you, Pat. All right, thank you, Ron. You look very dapper. Hunt to David Palmer. Scott Player. Palmer handles. Jumps around. He can do some things with the ball when he gets it. Including playing quarterback. Yeah. Huh? Seven nothing. Minnesota's second offensive effort coming up. Six forty six left in the first. CBS doesn't have it. ABC doesn't have it. Now Fox has a Super Bowl. Well, got a new guy doing promo, Randy Moss. More things you can do, and I'll tell you what, what an exciting game that's going to be. I mean, you see the, you know, in the AFC, we know it's going to be either Denver or the New York Jets, and the NFC, we still got Atlanta, and it's going to be one of these two teams. Robert Smith stopped by Lasseter. Lasseter making too many tackles. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that you don't like when you're when you're free safety, and that's who you're talking about here. Lasseter, the, the free safety making tackles. That Eight means that before Lasseter gets here, you've gone by the defensive line and linebackers, and that's the last thing that you want is your free safety to be making a lot of tackles. Palmer again at quarterback. And here he goes to the left. He's got the first down at a tailback, I guess you'd have to say that is. Well, it's the old single wing tailback. Yeah, but the big thing is Randall Cunningham splits out of left end. He got a little block out there. Yeah. They ran to the side. Watch, here's Randall Cunningham out there. Now, now, now he comes up there. He knows that the run is to his side. So he comes up and gets in a little blocking deal. Yeah, he does. Gives Corey Chavis. Yeah. Corey Chavis is the starting rookie corner and wonder what in the heck is this? I'm covering a guy. I'm covering a guy. And out comes a quarterback in front of me. He had a scouting report, a thorough scatter, scouting report on all the wide receivers, but none on Randall Cunningham. Here's Cunningham dropping, looking, and taking off. To the 40, Jameer Miller made the stop. You know, if we look at the Minnesota Vikings on the first 15 plays, look at that. They had 10 runs, five passes, and they had a different formation on every play, 15 different formations. And talking about different formations, the Arizona Cardinals had a nickel defense on that last play on first down. So they're trying to change things up to try to get something to slow up this Viking offense. Two tight ends set up, two wide receivers, one back. Cunningham drops, gets it out to Smith. Gets a couple. Yeah, this is the difference, I think, between regular season and playoff with Robert Smith. Remember during the regular season, we were talking to him and said, you know, everyone talks about all my injuries, and I've had all these injuries, and he said, I've narrowed them down that they're all on the sidelines, and it's fighting to stay in bounds. All my injuries have been out there, so now when I get close to the sidelines, I manage that and just go out of bounds. Now on that one, he, he put his head down. Yep. He didn't go out of bounds. But he said every injury has been on that type of play that just happened there. But these are playoffs. These are sudden death. That's Palmer in motion, and this is Cunningham out to David Palmer, and he gets a first down for Minnesota. You know, every time we see David Palmer play, he makes a couple of big plays in the game, either in the kicking game or a play like this. Here he is in motion. You see, he started in the backfield. He goes all the way out there. Now he's going to get on a corner. And you think, well, you're not going to throw him that ball. But, of course, the corner is Corey Chavis. He drops off and leaves Palmer wide open. Poor Corey Chavis, he's out there. You know, he, he's looking to play a wide receiver all day. And then the last two plays, He's had a running back and a quarterback. Now he's got Robert Smith. That's Charles Evans carrying the ball, the fullback, and you won't hear much of that. Evans doesn't carry it much. 
The thing about David Palmer, he can do anything. He can he returns kicks, of course. Be a quarterback, as you said. As once they figure out how to get the ball to him, and they do a good job of that, he can do any, a lot of things with it. As you said, he can throw it. And I think every game that we've ever done, every every Minnesota Viking, he's come up with at least one real big play. Yep. That's Todd Stussy again. Why well, you hate to heap so much praise on one guy, David Palmer? No, you don't really hate to, do you? No, no, you like to. Sometimes yeah. it's good to heap praise. Remember the Dallas game, Thanksgiving game, Thanksgiving Day. He had two long returns called back. Yeah, you know what the opposite of heaping praise is? What? Piling on. You know, and you don't really need piling on one. praise. Yeah. No, 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 just pile on. Yeah. You know, like if something's open. You know, I mean, you got an open pile where someone is vulnerable. For example, the officials this year. They've yeah. Been very vulnerable. So it's very easy to pile on. Pile. Yes. The opposite of piling on is heaping praise. Well, the officials, you're right, haven't gotten a lot of heaping praise this year. A lot of piling on. Cunningham hits Chris Carter. And Carter stretches to try to get the first again, stopped by Lassiter. And again, Aeneas Williams is out there, and he's on. All the coverage is going towards Randy Mark. That's Todd Stussy there after he's been offsides a couple of times. That's 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 a way you get an offensive lineman's concentration back. You do that, you just punch him in the mouth. That's what right. Jeff Christie is <laughs> Jeff old guy said, hey man, you know it's one quarter we're playing pretty good football here, but you've had two penalties, so he goes, Fop! Palmer again at quarterback or tailback. As we said, Here's he the pass. Pass. Well, we brought it back down. Got close to the sideline and got rid of it. Yeah, I saw that in uh, you know in practice. That's that's the one that he ran in practice. And in practice, it worked a lot better because he threw it for a touchdown pass, and that was a play that they were trying to set up. I mean, Palmer there, he's a quarterback, and then he, he's going to come in there, and then he ran to the right, and he ran to the left. Here he is. Here he's going to come out to the right. Now you see the two receivers here, and you'll see what he's looking at. Here's Randy Moss. He's running an option and he's kind of covered down here. But the guy that he was looking for was a deep guy back here. That's the guy that he threw it to in practice. They can line up quickly again. It's a Smith to the 10 almost. Just a little bit shy of a first. Speaking of being at practice, Friday we were there. Wasn't that a good practice? You know everything that they do is up tempo, and their their defense is up tempo, their offense is up tempo, their scout team is up tempo, and that's an amazing thing. The head coach Denny Green, I've never seen this before, but he's done it ever since Ben Stanford. He runs the scout team, so if they're practicing defense, he runs the offense. They're practicing offense, he runs the defense. And boy, do they give a good look! They really do. Cunningham, first down. First and goal with about the eight. And that would be an automatic there. The type of thing Randall Cunningham gets up and he's looking for a soft spot or a bubble, they call it. And if he sees a bubble at the line of scrimmage, he is going to go in a quarterback sneak. You see, there's no one right in here. You see, and he sees that if he just takes the ball and just gets right in behind his center, there's no way because the center wasn't covered, there's no way that they could stop him short of the first down. They're going to change ends. That's the end of the first quarter, and the Vikings have had the ball for all but three plays. Seven nothing. They lead. That's a beautiful mansion. Looks familiar. Yeah, it was. It was great. We had dinner there the other night with the new governor of the state of Minnesota. Governor Jesse Ventura and Jesse and his wife Terry invited us to dinner. It was great, wasn't it? We had help, oh. man. <laughs> we had a great meal, great visit. Cunningham has the pass picked off in the end zone by Enos Williams. Out to the 10. Got some room now. 
Knocked out of bounds by Leroy Horde. Yeah, we were talking about that Randall Cunningham hadn't thrown the ball to Randy Moss yet. And again, Aeneas Williams is man-to-man -man on him. Here's Randy Moss here. Here's Aeneas Williams. He's going to try and throw the slant. You see Aeneas Williams starts up. Then he backs off. And then the slant, he jumps the slant. Yep. He undercuts it. He knows that it's a slant because he can't go any deeper. He's in the end zone. So the minute that he sees this thing, you see, he just jumps underneath it and comes up with a great interception. They've stayed away from Aeneas Williams. They finally went to him. And look what happened. The Cardinals have the ball. They ran only three plays in the first quarter. Had the ball only 54 seconds. Plummer. Incomplete. No flag. And here comes one. There is a flag. Well, until right now, the their total yards has been minus one. I think Randall Cunningham, when you saw him talking to Randy Moss here, he was talking, you know. Number 27, defense. Every wide receiver is always open. I think he was probably saying that he was open. Here's Corey Fuller here. And you can see this, that looks like good defense to me. I mean, I know that the rule is that you can't touch the guy when the ball is in the air. But Corey Fuller looked pretty good on that play. The Cardinals again start from the hurry up huddle. And they almost don't get the play call. Before the clock ran out, there's a flag on the play. You see who got that penetration is Jerry Ball. Boy, is he a first down defensive player. And is he quick to be so big? So quick he was offside. Now, you know, he lines up, he takes all the ball that he can, all of the football that he can. Ball Outside. takes all the ball. Number 96, defense. And Jerry Ball doesn't do a lot of stupid things. And he's saying that the ball moves. And here's Jerry Ball right here. And he's saying that the ball moves. It was the center's head. The ball didn't move. The ball did not move. No, no. He was wrong on that. It was the center's head that moved. Plummer. He led Robert Griffith perfectly. And Griffith of the Vikings brings it back up to about the 45. Robert Griffith is the is a strong safety who also plays corner on nickel. That time he was trying to throw the ball deep to Frank Sanders. I think Jake Plummer held the ball too long. Robert Griffith is another guy, a defensive player yep. for this Viking team, that every time we see him comes up with big plays. Every time. Jake Plummer again, he's bootlegging to this side. See, he was going to throw to the right. Then he comes across his body to a secondary receiver. Robert Griffith was right there. See, here's Robert Griffith here. And the reason he makes the interception is when the tight end blocks, he's free. So he just drops right back here. Frank Sanders ran a crossing pattern, and Griffith comes up with the interception. See, the tight end blocks. So Griffith just keeps getting depth and getting depth, and Frank Sanders really ran the pattern right into him. Three wide receivers set up for Randall Cunningham, Robert Smith deep. Cardinals showing blitz. The Vikings pick it up, and he's going deep. Moss makes the catch. Inside the 20, the remarkable rookie, Randy Moss. Yeah, he was telling us the other day that he says, if I'm even with the guy or in front of him, Chunk it out as deep as you can. If the guy is in front of me, then just throw it short. And you see Aeneas Williams was in front of him, so he threw the ball short, and Randy Moss came back and get it. You see if the guy is on that side of you, now that's the new thing that they added. Yep. Beginning of the season, it was just let me run, and you just chunk it deep, dog. And now it's you just, I'll run, and you chunk it deep, dog, unless the guy is in front of me, then you throw it short, and I'll out jump him. And that's exactly what he did. Actually, it's pretty good coverage by Enos Williams. Well, it was, it, was, it was real good coverage, but again, Randy Moss and Randall Cunningham, that's an added thing that they've had in the last three weeks. Minnesota timeout. All Madden, baby. Now you talking, baby. You're talking, baby. You're talking. And that's John Randall talking. Sunday, January 24th, it's the blockbuster 
16th annual All Madden team. We've seen some great players this season. We've picked this All Madden team. It's a football Madden style. So don't miss the Blockbuster 16th annual All Madden team at 3 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. You know, and you can bet that there's going to be a lot of players off this Viking team on that team, including the guy that was said, now you're talking. John Randall. Yeah. You don't pick an All Madden coach. Do you uh, have you know I mean we've had everything you know from time to time we've had you know coach we've had coaches we've had kickers no kickers we've had uh, animals we've had kids we've had guys that climb yeah. ceilings and I remember one year I was a kicker emeritus the next year I didn't make it well the all Madden teams knows no boundaries Smith Nudges it down to about the 15, picked up a couple. Yeah, but that was, you know, that that catch again by Randy Moss was the one that he was he was telling us about that, you know, that he could get even with anyone and he could get by anyone unless the guy just ran deep. So he had to add the third thing. If the guy just runs deep and doesn't let me get by him or even with him so I can get by him, then just throw it short and I'll jump up and get it. And that's exactly what that play was. And that's what he does. Cunningham. Incomplete. Had a chance to be picked off by Jameer Miller. Yeah, but what time he had. I yeah. mean, Randall Cunningham looked to his left. I mean, you talk about read and progression. Watch his time. He's looking to his left, looking to his left, pumps to his left, comes back to the middle, pumps to his middle, looks to his right, and finally throws to his right. If you have that kind of time, you either have outstanding, outstanding pass protection, or you have a very, very poor pass rush. And if Jameer Miller didn't stick up his hand, Robert Smith was open. That would have been complete. Look at Simeon Rice down here. He's going against Todd Stucey. He hasn't gotten close yet. Stance looks good. Touchdown. Andrew Glover, the tight end. And we haven't mentioned him yet. Uh, we haven't gotten to him. Cunningham to Glover. That's what Randall Cunningham was saying the other day. I mean, here's here's Glover right here, and they split him out. You see, they have a bunch out there. They have three receivers, two of them being wide receivers, the guy in the middle. Being the tight end, Andrew Glover. And just look at the difference in size. The guy who caught the touchdown pass is 6'6. Six, six. And look at the pass. Yeah. Perfect. Minnesota 14, Arizona nothing. Second quarter. But this ball usually for Mitch Berger usually goes in the end zone or through the end zone. This one can be returned by Metcalf. But maybe it was a mistake. Chris Walsh down to make the stop at about the 15. Arizona minus one yard and the Vikings rocking and rolling 14 nothing. First and 10, Arizona at their own 16. Jake Plummer, pump fake, intercepted. Robert Griffith again, his second interception. They won't even have to move the sticks because the Vikings will have it inside the 20. First down. Yeah, Robert Griffith, we were talking to him the other day, and he said that he lost eight pounds to play this game because this game is more about coverage for him than it is playing against the run. And I'll tell you, those eight pounds that he dropped, he's playing today at 192, has really helped him. Here you just see he's just free. And he's just sitting back there and he's reading Jake Plummer. That was not about a great interception. That was about a poor or high pass. A high pass by that man, Jake Plummer. First and 10, Minnesota at the... Cardinals 16. And this Viking defense has really rattled Jake Plummer. You can just tell that. I mean, he has no rhythm. He has no confidence. He has nothing yet. 
A combination of everything has rattled, and that's Robert Smith inside the 10. It'll be first and goal there. Uh, you know, it's it's a very intimidating factor. I yeah. mean, this this offense and what they're doing, the defense and what they're doing, and then the third thing I think is this crowd yes. and what they're doing. I think that they've really been affected by the crowd. No question about it. And they've been affected a heck of a lot by this fucking offense oh, too. Yeah. That last touchdown to Andrew Glover, they had they had McCleskey was on them, and Glover is six foot six, and JJ McCleskey is five foot eight, and they've been having those kind of mismatches all day. Second down, I beg your pardon, it's not first. Cunningham has it batted down as he tried to go wide to Chris Carter. It was batted down by Andre Wadsworth. Yeah, that's the thing that you do as a defensive end on a three-step drop. You see, watch with right here. If, if a quarterback takes a three-step drop, what you want to do is get a little pass rush and then get your hands up because you're not going to get to him. Now watch Andre Wadsworth out there. You see, he just starts up yep. the field. He's not going to get to Cunningham. So the next best thing is jump up and take a lane away from him. Third down. They are five for five on third down conversions. They Carter in motion. Cunningham drops. Rush comes and gets him. Ronald McKinnon delayed blitz, but he got there. Nobody picked him up. And I think that was a cardinal plan that they were going to that they were going to do a lot of blitzing today, but the the Viking offense has just kept them off balance. Jim McKinnon, he's just coming on the delayed blitz. You yeah. see, he waits until all the blockers get on their guy and then when all the blockers get on their guy he comes on that delayed blitz. How about this guy Gary yeah, Anderson. I, that's, I can't that's imagine amazing, that. amazing isn't it. I can't imagine that. Well one of the things is of course playing indoors but not all of his games were indoors. The amazing thing to me is all of, her, all of his kicks are right down the middle. I mean you never think about one go hitting a goal post or going over a goal post. 17 nothing. You can own the Cowboys for a day because Jerry Jones has given up the team. It's easy to enter. Just log on to FoxSports.com and then watch Fox's Super Bowl pregame show from 11 a.m. Eastern to 2 p.m. Eastern for your chance to fly to Dallas, watch a game from the owner's box, tour the field, meet the Cowboy cheerleaders. So log on now and watch for your chance to win. You might enter. Yep, Mitch Berger got that kick in the end zone again. Let's go to now Los Angeles and James Brown for an update. Pat, you know the Jets' Keyshawn Johnson says, give me the ball. He got the ball today, including this 21-yard strike from Vinny Testaverde. He also ran one in, played defense, and got a pick and a fumble recovery. And that result, Jets will be playing Denver next week in the title game. Back to John Madden and the kicker emeritus, Pat Summerall. Thank you, J.B. Always nice to hear from JB yes, during, a, during a shootout. Emeritus. Morrell. Adrian Morrell stays on his feet. By far the most successful Cardinal play of the day. He's stopped by Dixon Edwards. Yeah, he went right by Tony Williams. Tony Williams is the other defensive tackle in there with Jerry Ball. And if there's any place to run, you can run right at him, but you better get by that front group quickly. And this is that no huddle that the Cardinals do. Morrell again, no game. Stopped by Ed McDaniel. He's had a great year. Yeah, you see, we can see this at the line. And in, in, in fact, the Cardinals started to do that. Then they decided to go in a huddle. It, Jake Plummer has two signals. He can either signal to huddle up and they come back or he can signal at the line. The first one was at the line. This one was a huddle. Ron Pitts said they had decided to go on a quick count to take the try to take the crowd out of the game. Plummer outside Larry Centers. Centers outside the 40. About the 41. And Jake Plummer has to get something started, and that's it. I mean, that's that's the first pass that he completed. And you know, any 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 quarterback, you know, I mean, it's easy to say a young quarterback has to do that to get confident. I think any quarterback has to get that first completion. You'll get something to build on. And when you're in the you know second quarter and you still hadn't had your first completion, 
you start to get a little frustrated and I think that happened to Jake Plummer or is happening to Jake Plummer. They need three for a first. And Jake goes on the fade pattern to rob Moore and he'll get the first. Yeah, see anytime you see a press coverage that could be an automatic. Now here's a press coverage right here. And you see he gets right by his car. That's a heck of a move by Rob Moore. Yeah. Not making the catch, but that move, that swim move, in fact, that's a defensive line move to get away from the press corner because you know that you're going to get that quick up. And they hurry up again. Morrell gets away from one tackler, gets the ball ahead, stopped by Tony Williams, but gets three or four now we can see the at the line huddle right here you see all the guys come in Jake Plummer tells them all what to do now they go out to their assigned position and give them the formation and the play ready to go with more than 20 seconds left on the play clock Morrell lost flag on the play now that's a good news of that fast paced Offenses that you can get up and you can get a lot of plays off, but if you don't get first downs, then it works against you because what it does is it brings your defense right back on the field. And they don't get much time to rest. Offsides against Minnesota. Derek Alexander. Mark Tressman was saying last night, and other members of the Cardinal staff were saying, there's Foge Fazio. Handles the defense from Minnesota. Yeah, you see what Foge is doing there is he has the wristband. Now, if they use the at the line huddle, he's going to use hand signals. If they get in the huddle and he has his normal time, then he calls those defenses off of that wristband. Deep is Morrell. Plummer, incomplete, flag on the play again. I started to say Mark Tressman was saying that this hurry up this uh, at the line business fits the personality of Jake Plummer. It does the 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 Vikings were in a zone blitz Derek Alexander Outside, dropped out. Number 96 defense lined up in the neutral zone the five yard penalty. That's Jerry Ball. <laughs> this this is really against the against the Vikings but if you look here Jake Plummer never had control of that ball to throw it well he turned it around just before he let it go he looked like he wasn't comfortable yeah. the position he had he went to change it but Jerry Ball who we talked about who takes as much of the football as he can was in the neutral zone first and five another flag this one is against Arizona there's Foge Fazio he's Prior to the snap, ball start. Number 75, up there. Five Lomas Brown, the and veteran who spent so many good years with Detroit. That's the last guy that you would expect, Lomas Brown here, a 14 year veteran. And if you have to say, you know, who's the best offensive lineman on this Cardinal team is Lomas Brown. Who's the most consistent is Lomas Brown. Who would be the last guy that would be jumping? I mean, he played all those Brown. years at Detroit. He played so many games here. You would say to Lomas Brown, he's the first guy. Plummer gets it to Frank uh, Sanders across the middle, and Sanders will get enough for an Arizona first down. And Sanders is saying it's about time, but now again the the the, the Cardinals are going in the at the line. You see, they're not huddling up. They're just right at the line. He just calls the plays. He tells the formation here. You see now the Vikings, they can't turn their back. That's a big thing in the defense is you can't turn your back to the offense because you never know what formation they're going to get into, when they're going to break, or when they're going to snap the ball. That's one of the things the Vikings were saying. we got to remember to face them. Handoff is to Adrian Morrell. Was stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Dixon Edwards. Flag, on the play. Flag again. You know, the, the, whether this thing is really effective or not, and it is working pretty well, this at the line huddle, it's getting a lot of penalties yeah, on both is. sides. A lot of people in the conference. Well, I think they have three in the conference and two that are uh, guard dogging. 
There's no infraction on the play. Second down. False alarm. I wonder if there were no infraction, what it was. <laughs> what was the discussion in the conference about? I don't know. I mean, someone must have. That's Mark Tressman. Someone must have thrown something and then think that they didn't see it or thrown something and then got talked out of it. But you see here, they're still having their little yeah. conference there, aren't they? Yeah, Tom White, the referee, in the white hat. Remember when the referee used to be in the black hat and all the rest up in white? Right. And then they just flip flopped it. I think if the Cardinals are going to stay in this game, they need a score here. I mean, they have to get something on the board. The first points are always the toughest to get something on the board to build upon. Even three. Open is Chris Gedney. Gedney knocked out of bounds. Because that's one thing, you know, that, you know, Jake Plummer, you know, can do it. Remember when we did the Dallas game and the Cardinals didn't look good at all in the first half and then the second half, they came out and just opened up and they did it a lot with, with this, with this no huddle, with this quick pace, you know, and Jake Plummer loves this type of thing. Here you see both coordinators there, Foch Fazio on the right calling the defenses, Mark Pressman on the left calling the play. Orlando Thomas. Pull his right hamstring is out of the game. Bass has taken his place in the Viking secondary. Here's Jake Plummer dropping. That's to Larry Sinners, and he gets inside the Viking five. You know, it's interesting how Jake Plummer hadn't completed a pass his whole game, and he hit that first little oh, thing out here yep. to Larry Center. And that got him off the schneid or whatever you call that. That got him started. That got Mark Tressman right here into some kind of groove and calling plays. That put Foch Fazio a little on the defensive and 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 the the flow is starting to change right here. Or started to change on that on that first reception by Larry Centers. Plummer's five out of five on this drive. Knocked in the air, incomplete, a flag on the play. Corey Fuller hit Rob Moore a little bit too early, in the opinion of the officials. Well, that was that slant, and remember how Aeneas Williams had played it earlier. Corey Fuller tried to play it like that. That's interference. Number 27, defense. Foul occurred in the end zone. Ball was placed on the one yard line. First and goal. You see, here's Corey Fuller here. He's He's right here, so he's going to come in, and he's looking in at the quarterback. You see, when he tries to get inside, right there, there's a little bump on yes. Rob Moore. Did it with his body. And you see what Aeneas Williams did. Aeneas Williams undercut that thing yep. and got an interception. Corey Fuller tried to ride it in from behind, and when he tried to go over the top, he got the penalty. Mario Bates is deep. He gets the call, a carry, he doesn't make it. Let him go, they say. Let him unstack. Yep. Adrian Morrell is, is the starting tailback for this group. With Mario Bates, they put in a short yardage and goal line. And you see Bates, he's in the, in the high formation. Julius Hayes is the lead blocker. And, and, and the Vikings give him nothing right there. Second goal with the one. And Dwayne, Dwayne Rudd was right there at the hole. Both of those safeties were up there. That's another guy who's looked good every time we've seen the Vikings play. Robert Griffith. Plummer tries to sneak it in. There's a flag on the play, and Plummer didn't make it. Who was that flop in there in the ground? It had to be John Randall, but it wasn't. It was Jerry Ball, I think. I want to see that. Well, it was Tony Williams, I guess. That's a tough penalty. Lomas Brown. Yeah, they call it again on Lomas Brown. No, that's not uh, Lomas no, Brown. No, it's not. Uh, I'll tell you who it was. There was a guy next to Lomas yep, Brown who was yep. Mike Devlin. Yep. He's a backup offensive lineman. Comes in on goal line. He's playing tight end. And plays tight end. What a tackle on Jake Plummer. All that's going to do is knock him back and get him out of a running situation. Going to reset the clock. They lost two seconds. 
But that uh, they also lost a run position. Yeah. 39 seconds. Thank you. Because of that penalty. So now now I would think that on second down that this would be a passing play. The Cardinals are in four wide receiver look. Plummer, quarterback draw. Gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. And that's not a bad idea. You know, he just reads the box. And he goes in and he goes four wide receivers. And if there's five men in the box, you see they got one, two, three, four, five, then he's going to run the ball. If there were six men in the box, he would, he would pass the ball. He just had too far to go. Had he needed about three or four yards, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. But he needed about five or six. And that led, you know, that 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 extra couple yardage gave him the time to react to it. Third and goal at the one. Bates is deep. Plummer's going to throw it. Does throw. Oh, no. Incomplete. 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 Get me. Couldn't find the handle. I thought he had it for a moment. Well, Jake Plummer finally got something going. The Cardinals got into a roll here, so now they can start playing offense. Gedney is a backup tight end, and they like him in the passing game a lot, and they throw to him. That's a that's a perfect pass. I mean, he was right there. Jake Plummer threw it exactly where he had to. Chris Gedney just dropped the ball. No field goal. I can't believe this. You don't have to do this this early in the game. Adrian Morrell is deep. Take us to him. Jake Plummer looking. Got to throw it to somebody and throws it out of the end zone. The Vikings stop him from scoring, but there's a flag on the play. Yeah, and that, I mean, I've always said that the toughest points to get are the first punch. You always get on the board. I can't see them going for that on fourth down. Jake Plummer throws that ball. Dwayne Rudd comes across. Watch Rudd. He's trying to avoid that. He's not. He's not trying to hit him, or at least he put his arms out like he was trying to avoid him. But he did hit him with his chest. Cardinals dodged a bullet there. I mean, this yeah, is going to be. Tough call. Yeah, that is a tough call. But the thing is, is, is Rudd could have stopped. I mean, I mean, he put his hands out there, but he could have stopped. The key to the whole thing, I guess, is that was fourth down. Now it's back to first down. They got four more pops. Yeah, and, and the mistake that the Cardinals made, they got erased. They had an eraser on that pencil. Oh, boy. Do they ever. Bates gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. Touchdown, Cardinals. You saw Vince Tobin signal go for the extra point. Don't go for two. Yeah, well, they finally got on the board, and they, you know, uh, Jake Plummer is getting some confidence now. The offensive line has some control. They got a break by getting that penalty when they when they elected to go for it on fourth down, and now they're back in this game. Yeah. But again, it all started with that little pass to Larry Centers, and that's why Larry Centers is so important to this Cardinal offense and always has been 13 plays 80 yards seven minutes 52 seconds that was the second play the play you're talking about second play of that drive flags on this play and isn't it something how the tempo of this game has changed when the Cardinals went to that no huddle it changed the whole tempo and we've had about seven or eight flags since that point point. and how about the noise listen the crowd has settled down 94 You know that's always been the way to oh, take yeah. the crowd out of there is to do well because if you're doing well if you're the visiting team and you're doing well then if the crowd yells they're yelling for you. Chris Jackie hit the extra point. Now he'll have to do it from five yards further back. And since they changed the pace on this game it's gotten a little sloppy hasn't it. Yeah it has. More competitive but more sloppy. It's a game instead of a blowout. Is good. The extra point by Jackie is good, and it's 17 7.
Well, Jake Plummer finally got into a groove here, and again they had that fourth down penalty, but but that was a good call by the officials. I mean, Dwayne Rudd could have stopped yeah. and didn't, and they hit Jake Plummer out of bounds on fourth down. That's David Connor breaks away. After about the 26, he makes things exciting. There's Dwayne Rudd there, and I think. You know, he probably knows it because when he hit him, I mean, it was after Jake Plummer had gone out of bounds. And he put both hands out, but that doesn't mean just because you put both hands out that you can hit him. Plus, he had already thrown the ball. Yeah, and, and, and the ball was gone. He was out of bounds. Everything, everything was wrong with that one. The Cardinals are in a nickel defense, five defensive backs now on first down. Cunningham put his hand on his left hip. As if to change the play, that's Robert Smith. Well, you know, that's one, of the, that's one of the things that you do when you go to nickel. What they do is they bring in Tommy Knight, number 22, so he gives them their fifth defensive back. So, so what you're doing is you're saying if they're going to play us with five defensive backs, that means that they take out a linebacker. Now, if they take out a linebacker, they have one less run defender, and that's when you want to run the ball, and that's what Randall Cunningham did. And Lassiter again had to make the tackle. Three wide receivers set up for the Vikings this time. And uh, gives to Smith. Smith all the way inside the Cardinal 40. That, that's a way to get him out of nickel. If they want to play a, a nickel on regular downs, you just run at him. And that's exactly what you watch Tommy Knight will go out of here. Here we just see Robert Smith here, and we look at the block you see Jeff Christie does a great job not a good job he does a great job of getting mo movement on the nose tackle because if you can get stop penetration then that's good if you can get a little movement as he did there it's going to be really good first and ten Minnesota Cunningham to Horn and Leroy Horn hammers down stopped again by Lassiter and a two minute warning Signaling the end of the first half with the Vikings leading by 10. Don't forget next Sunday. Coverage begins 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Either in Atlanta or here. The Falcons have already won. Led by Jamal Anderson. A tenacious defense. 49ers fought valiantly, didn't they? They sure did. Smith again steps in and out of tackle and gets enough to get down to about the 22-yard line. You know, that's one of the things we talked about what started this this running here of the Minnesota Vikings. It was a nickel defense. Mm -hmm. And anytime they use nickel defense the way you run them out of nickel defense is by running the ball, but I think I think then they found something that's pretty good here and running is also a way to get control back of the game. Another one of the many things they do so well. Carter no. Well you aren't going to see that no, very often. No. And you know what. I mean Chris Carter is a great receiver and he's even better when you get in the in, in the red zone. He got too close to his body. Yep, that's exactly what happened. But he, but he had it out there yep. in his hands, and I think as he brought it into his body, I think it hits his face mask. Watch him; it's in his hands, and he's bringing it into the body, yep. and then it hits his face mask, and it bounces out of his hands because it hit his face mask. Go right. Go right. If he's just hands, that's a touchdown. It doesn't hit that face mask. Cunningham's gonna try again. Is out to Andrew Glover. You know, Randall Cunningham was telling us the other day that that's what you know, he likes about Andrew Glover. That, that you know, with Randy Moss and with Chris Carter, and he, he said they start taking those guys away. He said they have to give me Andrew Glover, and he's such a big target. I mean, like we said before, he's six foot six, about 260 pounds. Just watching him the other day and standing by him, I said, holy oh, I had no idea this guy was no, that I didn't big. either. I remember him when he was with the Raiders. Yeah. That's Leroy Hard. 
Coming up on the Visa halftime report, JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris will have first half analysis plus highlights of the first game, the Jacksonville New York Jets game. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa halftime report. Hey, this this Minnesota Viking team is, has really had to weigh with this Cardinal defense and again we've talked about the the running back you know Robert Smith and then they go to Horde and they have Palmer back there and the wide receivers but again it all starts with this offensive line and they've really had control there we showed what a great block that Jeff Christie made in in there in the middle but that that whole offensive line has had control of that defensive line of the Cardinals this whole game so much so that Lassiter the safety man has made 10 tackles already you know and when you talk about great offensive linemen you have to talk about Randall McDaniel there the left guard is yeah. he's like in the Pro Bowl every year here's Cunningham gets away from one Bletcher Wadsworth gets the ball out to hard and Horde touchdown. A delayed call. I think the official who was looking at it lost his whistle for a moment. That's where Randall Cunningham has always been so tough, is rolling out, scrambling to his right. This isn't a designed play. He just gets out of that pocket, buys time, gets out there, and then he gets another look at stuff. He gets another look, and look what he finds. Leroy Horde and Leroy Horde. Just got that ball inside the pylon. Hi, ball. Enos Williams down. Well, Aeneas Williams has been doing such a, a great job today on Randy Moss. He's been covering him all over the field. Randy Moss has only caught that one pass against him. We talked about Randall McDaniel. Watch his block on that. I mean, watch his, his pass protection. I mean, he is so strong. That he can just stand up and get his hands underneath you. And there's no way that when you get in that push, he just gets his leverage and his arms and his shoulders are so strong that he just stops you. And the very little push it right now is stop. Very unique stance. Yeah, that was from when he had a bad angle, but you see the big thing on that play was Randall Cunningham. Yeah. I mean, buying time, getting out there, getting another look at it, and finding Leroy Horde. Eight plays, 74 yards, the Vikings. And Gary Anderson will try the extra point. And again, he hasn't missed a kick of any kind. Extra point or field goal. There's only one word for that, isn't there? Yeah, there sure is. Don't forget, again, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, J.B. Terry, Howie, and Chris. We'll have uh, the analysis of the first half. Highlights of the Jacksonville New York Jet game. Our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second statistics. That's all coming up on the Visa halftime report. Randall Cunningham. He is like, uh, well, a, not only a new man, a different man. But, and, and you know he's he's doing it so calmly that he makes everything look easy and he's doing everything in a relaxed mode yeah. usually with a smile on his face yeah. and even during a football game you find a place for a laugh Red McComb yeah, there's a smile on his face yeah. too I'll tell you what a, what an addition he's been to this Minnesota Viking franchise I mean he he came in and, and bought this team and they were kind of in turmoil and he took over and said that he's the guy and he's the one owner and gave Denny Green a contract extension, gave all his assistant coaches new contracts, and put some organization back into this organization. Some the Minnesota, yeah, the Minnesota Vikings needed Red McComb. The NFL needed Red McComb. And he is really, really having a good time. How could you not? Yeah, I mean, he, 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 he first took over this team and said, I don't see the, how we can lose a game. We may win them all. And he hadn't seen them lose a game. Yeah, they've only lost one, and he wasn't there. Red says, heck, this NFL's easy. Yeah. 
Paul Tagliabue, the commissioner's up there with him someplace, I think. Berger hammers it out of the end zone. And did he get energy on that one? Now Berger, after he kicks off one like this, he come he, he comes over and he eats a candy bar. Yeah. You know what I can't understand? He keeps a candy bar in his shoe. Now he goes over and there it is right there. You see, he has a Snickers in there. He takes a bite of Snickers, but you know, in all the years that I coached, then he puts I it coach, back in the shoe. I know, but of all the years that I coached and all the teams that I had. Any time that a guy would have a candy bar, someone else would eat it. I don't know why all the other players leave him alone. Why some guy? Because it's in his shoe. Yeah, but that's wrapped. I mean, who's can't turn a football game? Well, I need a, I need a candy bar out of a shoe. Somebody else's. Larry Center. Casey wants to know what time it is. He's got his watch in there. That has to be a kicker's thing. You know, he, you know, he said the other day. He says, you know, he said you talk about the candy bar, you talk about shoes, you talk about what. He said, how about the fact that I'm a good kicker? And I said, yeah, okay, you're right. You know, sometimes a guy has a little quirk here and there, and yeah. kickers tend to have little quirks here and there, and they do indeed. Then you tend to get on their quirks, and you forget how well they play. I've always maintained that. That was the bottom line. Well, Mitch Berger, you know, you know, plays very well. I mean, we know that that uh, you know, I mean, he gives them such good field position. I mean, when he kicks the ball off, the the best friend of a kickoff coverage team is a kicker that kicks the ball into the end zone. And that combination of Mitch Berger and Gary Anderson is something on this Minnesota Viking team that doesn't even get talked about. You know, by the time you get through their offense and a few defensive players, you never get into. The fact that hey, these these kickers are also the best. Well, how much? Uh, there they are, and they, that's what they've done this year. Well, yeah. That includes today. They have 42 touchbacks. That means the ball is kicked in the end zone, and they don't return it. And Gary Anderson, like I said, was only one word for that. Yeah. You got it. Well, how much time? I started to say how how much time do the special teams spend on the field? They say it's about 15 percent. Didn't George Allen figure that out one time? Yeah, I mean, or or more than that, yeah. I think. But you know, and, and it has to be given equal time in all areas. Jake Plummer, the receiver, the intended receiver, fell down or was tripped. It was Rob Moore. It was funny how the the Vikings, you know, took back it, where, where they let the Cardinals, you know, get a little play, get a touchdown, kind of get some rhythm going, and then they took back control of the game. And the way they did it was with their offensive line and the running game. And then that rested their defense because of the long drive. Now the defense can come in there. They're fresh. They can go after them. And all these things is what team play and chemistry is all about. Morale. Taken down by Jimmy Hitchcock. Been another great addition to this Minnesota defense. Well, it's it's it, it's one of those things that you know that that's where they were vulnerable. You know that last year, you know the Minnesota Vikings were a good offense, but you could also score a lot of points against them. And they needed a corner. They got Jimmy Hitchcock. They got him from the Patriots. Brought him in there, and he really solidified that right corner. He's given him seven interceptions. Yeah. And he's a guy that really studies hard and you know does film work and is a smart football player and 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 that has helped this defense out along with the offense being so strong. What the heck was Chris Carter doing? Did he yeah, have his oh, shirt halfway like off or halfway on or something? He had something like a flak jacket on, a mini flak jacket. Well, he has a he has a belt that's yeah. that's too high for a regular it's belt. A, yeah. And it probably got a little tight. You know, it, it, it's like, you know how you see, see he knows it's halftime. He's not going to play anymore. So you know how after you have a big meal, you always loosen your belt to yeah. just open it up. Yeah. I think this first half has been like a big meal for Chris Carter. Indeed. Wait a minute. Straighten the chain out. OK. Could you, see, last... you see the chain yeah, flop in there? I did. Huh? There was, Scientific there was a, game. There was a chink in that yeah. man's armor. They talk about computers and something wrong with the chain. 
It's more than it looked like when it was out there before they got the chink out. I think, I think there's a couple extra links in that <laughs> chain that they you know that they put the thing too far up. There it is. Look at that. It's wrapped it? around the pole. <laughs> There you go. It just popped out. Now, after you get the chink out of your thing, then you got to pull it again. That could be vital. It could be very vital, but, <laughs> but that's just halftime. That's the end of the first <laughs> half for the score of the Vikings 24. The Cardinals 7. This Fox NFC divisional game will continue with the Visa halftime report after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Four to seven, the Vikings and Cardinals have both returned to the field. Let's look at halftime statistics, John. Well, you, I mean, you, it was just all about the Vikings. If you look at the the rushing yards, 124 to 20, and that's where you really control time and the clock. And you know, when you have this, then you're usually going to get that. But the Vikings also had everything else. I mean, they had the pass yards, they had the total plays. They had one less turnover. So in that first half, the Vikings beat the Cardinals every way that a team can be beaten. 21 Quarterback comparison. Plummer 6 out of 12. Cunningham 11 out of 16. Two touchdowns, one intercepted. Jakes had two intercepted. Right. You know, Excuse me, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's a, that's a halftime comparison, but really Jake Plummer didn't even have a completion in the first quarter. So those numbers were Jake Plummer's passing numbers were about second quarter numbers. And one drive almost. Let's go down to Ron Pitts now on the sideline. All right, thank you, Pat. I talked to Vince Tobin. He said the big problem for us is that we are not wrapping up and we're not getting off blocks in our front defensive four. It's not a matter of fronts. It's not a matter of getting caught with the nickel personnel in the field. We got to do a better job of getting off blocks. I talked to Brian Billick, the offensive coordinator for the Vikings. He said, I feel confident we can run the ball whenever we want to, wherever we want to. I'm going to hold on to that and play action pass and look for the deep ball when I get a chance. Pat, back up to you. Well, the Vikings certainly made like Brian Billick knew what he was talking about. That's Adrian Morrell. Hit by Derek Alexander. Picked up about three. You know, and part of that that, you know, Vince Tobin was talking about that his defense has to get off blocks. I think you can say the other side, you know, like we said in the first half, that that Minnesota offensive line has done such a good job of not letting them get off blocks, yeah, of right. sending them, putting them back, and getting angles and doing all those things. They were almost perfect except for a few blitzes. Those guys keep burrowing. It's going to be tougher to get off blocks. Pass caught by Metcalf. And he's going to be short of a first down by about three. Corey, Corey Fuller. Fuller really played that one well. Pat. I mean, that's that's the thing that you want to do. You want to be under control and you want to have your knees bent. Watch Fuller out here in this tackle. Metcalf catches a ball in front of him, but watch how he breaks down, bends his knees, doesn't go for anything, just keeps his head right in front of his numbers his head up his eyes up his knees bent that was a perfect open field tackle four wide outs good blitz time if you're the Vikings they don't bring it Derek Metcalf made the catch and uh, picked up enough for Arizona first down. Now we see Jeff Plummer. He's I mean Jake Plummer. He's saying that he wants you know the play and he wants it quickly because he doesn't want to you know he wants to get back into a rhythm you know and not let the defense get into a rhythm with him. So he has that quick huddle. So now he gets up to the line of scrimmage with plenty of time to look at what this defense is doing. Plummer drops screen pass. And Jerry Ball stayed with it. Larry Centers caught by Jerry Ball. You know, that's one of the things that I've noticed this year, that defensive tackles are really playing screens. We're seeing more screen passes in football, and defensive tackles are playing them better than they ever have. You know, that the minute that they see screen, instead of continuing to rush the passer, they're just running straight down the line, and they're meeting a the receiver right at the line of scrimmage. Morrell. Adrian Morrell, midfield. Derek 
Alexander. See, Ed McDaniel has to make that play because they double team Jerry Ball. And that's that's the old thing that if they double team Jerry Ball, then then Ed McDaniel has to make the play. If they single team Jerry Ball, then he has to make the play. Watch Jerry Ball. See the double team there? When they get double, Ed McDaniel has to be free. Ed McDaniel ran out in the five hole and the ball was run in the one hole. Morrell cuts it back again. Gets to the Viking 40. Three yard line, 44, call it. See, that was the thing that, you know, I'm sure that they talked about in the in the locker room at halftime is, is that we can't become one dimensional. Even though we're down 24 to 7, we just can't go out and pass, pass, pass every down. We have to get some running to keep the defense playing two dimensional football. Second and three. Caught by Johnny McWilliams. If you look at again at this this on the line huddle you see the Cardinals are now that means now watch the defense they can't get in a huddle either and they don't want to turn their backs you That's see they all want to be looking here and they have to be able to get the signals from the sideline not off the wristband Plummer still yelling first and ten back to Morrell flag on the play John Randall. I thought I heard a whistle too. I, I thought I heard a whistle before the ball was snapped. Like if it's against the offense, we did hear it. The snap. Ball start. Number 64. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. James Dexter, who's been playing pretty well. Yeah, he has been playing pretty well, and that's a funny time to have a false start because he's the right tackle. And the ball was being run to the left side away from him. Usually the guy that usually the guy that jumps is on pass protection or the guy where the ball is being run at his hole. Three wide receivers set up. Jake Plummer drops and throws. Pass is caught. Maybe it bounced. But the official says it is a catch. Rob Moore. The official is right there and he was saying good catch. This is one of the things, you know, that, that, that a lot of quarterbacks will not throw to receivers, but throw away from defenders. Yep. And I think that's exactly what Jake Plummer was doing there. And he says that he does that. You know, throw it in a place where you hope your guy can catch it, but you know that their guy's not going to. Second and four. That's Morrell. Stopped by Tony Williams right at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, the guy that really stopped it was Dwayne Rudd. They were trying to get a lead on him, and he stopped Larry Sanders. Watch Dwayne Rudd here. When he sees this run coming, he is really going to hit this thing, and he gives him no hole there. See him hit it there and take on the lead block? Yeah. And now when, when he did that, that forced the ball back to the inside. Third and four. And Rudd blew that thing up. Plummer. Gets rid of it to Rob Moore, and Moore is inside the Viking 10. That is Jake at his best. Yeah, that's why the they down. call him. That's why they call him Jake the Snake, because he's never out of it. And that's the way he plays. I mean, he's always having fun, and he, I mean, he's a guy that always the ball is always alive. And you see, he steps up here, then he moves around, and they got hold of him. He throws it back across his body, yeah. throws it to the other side, up over his head. Well, say, well, he says that he practices throwing from every angle. He calls it practicing the clock. He says because you don't get to throw the ball just perfectly every time. Morrell gets down to about the two. Yeah, that's pretty good running. Hitchcock. Here. That last one that Jake Plummer threw, that was his first completion of breaking the pocket. And, and that's usually what he does so well. But yeah. I think the thing, you know, we talked about how Minnesota lost control there for a little, lost some momentum, and they got it back with their running. The Cardinals are getting it back with their running. Plummer didn't get in. Pass was complete to Sanders, but didn't break the plane. Corey Fuller has made two real good tackles on this drive. We talked about the earlier one in the open field tackle. So watch him on this one. Watch Corey Fuller right here come up and whack. 
That's the thing. He just knocked him right back where he came from. I mean, that was a tackle. I mean, I mean, you get underneath, you get leverage, and you just give him a lift. They need about a foot. Mario Bates is in. Plummer throws it out of the end zone. Intended for Johnny McWilliams. No chance to catch it. And no sign of the field goal team yet. Well, the field goal team is lined up over in the sideline. You see that Vince Tobin just walked in there, but they're going to go for it. Yep. And again, I don't know that they, they have to. I mean, every time that I would get down here in a game like this, I would always take the field goal. Well, they got a break the last time, remember, they were down here. They got eight runs at it. Yeah, well, it, it was a fourth down, incomplete pass, and Dwayne Rudd hit Jake Plummer after he threw the ball out, out of bounds. bounds. I think Jake the Cardinals are going to take time out. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, let's talk this one over. So Arizona will have two left. 44 7 Minnesota. That guy's not building roads. Oh, he's getting a hole for ice fishing. Bates into the end zone. The Cardinals successful again. When they gave up the field goal and took the try for the touchdown. Well, Jake Plummer on that drive was seven out of the eight. Adrian Morrell had run for 27 yards, and then they're going to get it right in here. They're going to come right in this area. You see, they start on a double team. The tight end comes off. They make a couple of perfect blocks in there. Yep. They don't let the tackle get out there. They get a pretty good lead right there, and there was just no Vikings around. John Randall hasn't made a tackle yet. And, and a lot of that has to do with Lomas Brown. Jackie's extra point is good. And it's 24 14. Ice fishing looks like fun. Did it once. That was enough. Jackie to kick it off. 24 14. Palmer. Flag on the play already. The flags, there are two of them, are all the way back up at the 40 yard line. Yeah, David Palmer took his time getting up into that wedge, didn't he? He had a good wedge developing there. The Cardinals the, offside. The Arizona Cardinals were, were offside, so you would think that they'll make them kick it again. Offside. Number 52. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Re kick. Zach Walsh. 7.15 left to play in the third. The Vikings up by 10. You know, we always talk about, you know, kickoff returns and good wedges. And, and again, that was a, a good wedge that the Vikings had going there. And Palmer looked like he lallygagged up to get into it. Lallygagged. Lallygagged. I like that. Is that a word? I don't know. Ker he kerfuffled to get up in there. I'll look them up as soon as I have a chance. Well, you see that Arizona. I mean, I find them. Arizona but. had such a slow start there that, that you know, you know that they've been in a comeback mode ever since, and because of that first quarter. But the two drives they've had have looked very effective. Yeah, because they got some running going. Yeah. You know, and then once they got running going, then you know Jake Plummer could do what he does best, and that's throw the ball and run and throw the ball. Palmer's at the 10, the 20. And almost broke it. And uh, with a wise choice to make him kick it off again. Because the Vikings will start their offensive unit will outside their own 40. 414, Pat Summerall with John Madden at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Cardinals, by being offside on the first time they kicked it off, lost 18 yards due to that penalty. Flag on the play as Cunningham is going to go deep. Moss incomplete. Well, Aeneas Williams is proud of that coverage because he caught up with him. Yep. 
They should was, be. He was saying before the game that you know the one of the guys who really played Randy Moss well was Daryl Green. And he played from outside in so he could always see the ball in Randy Moss and offsides. Number 94. Defense. Line up in the neutral zone. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Bernard Wilson. But Aeneas Williams said that he couldn't do that because he doesn't have speed like Daryl Green does, so he's just going to mix them up. And here you see, we talked about Randy Moss, what he wants. If he's beyond the guy or even with the guy, chunk it out there as far as you can. Randall Cunningham could have thrown a couple more steps on it. Smith. Straight ahead. Close to a first down. He may have it. That was one of the things that they thought about. You know, we have to get the ball to Randy Moss. Randy Moss doesn't run a lot of short patterns, nor does he run a lot of inside patterns. So everyone now is just playing for that deep ball. So I think somewhere they're going to have to start getting some some hooks or crosses or different types of patterns to Randy Moss to give the defense something else to think about. The Vikings have Jay Reed back. He was out, had been out for a long time with back problems, but he's back alternating with Matthew Hatchet. Fleetbucker, we saw him work on this. Carter's open inside the five. Corey Chavis brought him down. And they, they tried to get the ball deep to Randy Moss and Neas Williams had great coverage. So they went to a little trick, the old flea flicker. They hand the ball off to the running back. He throws it back to the quarterback. And then you go back and you throw the ball to Chris Carter. You see the run up here. Here's Chris Carter on the left, Randall Cunningham on the right. He didn't get it out there to Randy Moss, but he sure did get it out there to Chris Carter. Perfect. Chris Carter was telling me, he said that he hopes that Chavis plays on him. Leroy Hard is hit hard and knocked backwards. He might have picked up a yard. Here's Brian Billick. Now see how he calls the plays. They're always afraid. They're a little paranoid, some of these offensive coordinators, and they're afraid someone's going to read their lips and steal the signals. So they put the board up in front when they call the play. But Chris Carter was telling me that uh, he was watching Corey Chavis, who's just a rookie, and he said he's a little tight hipped. And anytime you get a tight hit, hipped corner, you can do double moves on him. Cunningham, the fade over Moss's head. Moss is getting a little frustrated there. And Aeneas Williams is right up there talking to him. He's going to run all the way back to the huddle with him. Aeneas Williams said, you didn't have anything. Randy Moss yes. said, I had something. This is where he's telling him, just chuck it up in the back of the end zone, dog. See, and he wants it right now. He wants the ball quicker, and he felt that he just had to wait too long, and the ball was overthrown. See, because he did a good position. Randy Moss got in good position to let Randall Cunningham throw it to the outside. He just threw it too far to the outside. Third and goal with the one. The catch was made by Chris Carter, but maybe he shouldn't have. And he threw the ball. Did he throw it at the official? I don't think he threw it at the official. I think that Randall Cunningham, the throw, brought him back. It did. He was in the end zone. And, and, and what the officials saying is that he bobbled the, the ball. ball. being placed in this spot because he was bobbling the ball. There was no original forward progress. Fourth down. You see, there was no original forward progress, yeah. which, which is true. He didn't have control of the ball. He was bobbling the ball, so it couldn't be forward progress stopped there. See, he still doesn't have control. He finally gets control, so that's where they counted him down. Anderson hits the field goal. From 20 yards out, and puts Minnesota ahead 27 to 14. There's Commissioner Paul Tagdebu. Spoke at a brunch here today earlier. Along with Gene Upshaw. Metcalf, five yards deep in the end zone, brings it out. Twenty seven to fourteen the Vikings in control at the moment the Cardinals have put together two good looking drives.
First and ten. Fumble. Plummer gets it back. Yeah, we were just looking at the statistics when the when the Cardinals get in the huddle and when they don't get in the huddle. You're going to see the fumble here. He just he just never got yeah. the ball. I mean, he was he was getting out of there before the ball came out. At least with this artificial turf, the ball just bounced right up in his hands. But look at this. With a huddle, they averaged 2.4 plays yards per play. With no huddle, 6.7 yards per play. Number to throw has Rob Moore out of bounds. You know, Jake Plummer looks when you meet him, spend some time around him with him. He looks so frail. Yeah, well, he is. But I mean, when you watch him play, you can tell that he's just a kid, and, and he has fun playing. I mean, and the thing that impresses me about him is that you know he can throw the ball. But for a second year guy, he has great game management. He, he has really great does. presence. Presence enough to sneak it ahead when he saw something there. Well, that was another one of those those no huddle things that we're going to see him. They're, they're doing it again. The line just lines up there. But we talk about any time you see a bubble or a soft spot, you can just do that. In fact, in fact, they used to call that the goose play. Yeah. That that if 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 you would see that there's no one in front of you, you you just hit your hands on the center. He'd give you the ball and you just run right right up the gut. I think that's probably still what they call it. The old goose play. Goose. Yeah. <laughs> you think they put old in front of it? <laughs> no. Centers never saw the ball coming. He was open. Plummer saw it. Larry Centers never saw it. Jake Plummer's complaining about something there, but you know they have these things now with these blitzes where if they're going to be a guy free, you have to throw hot. And sometimes they throw hot and they're not ready to. Think about a guy who has a motor that goes all the time yeah. but is going nowhere today is John Randall. And Lomas Brown has done a heck of a job on him out here. Here's Lomas Brown. Here's John Randall. Adrian Morrell had to ask centers what the play was. Clock is still running. Here comes the Viking Blitz. They pick it up pretty well. Hitchcock juggled it or he had a touch. He was ready to take it to the house. And he knew that too. We talked about Hitchcock. He had seven interceptions this year. And they were all the same type. Where he plays off, plays off, and then he looks and he jumps up. You see, he plays off and then he jumps it just like that. He's back off where he can see the quarterback and the defender. And if he has enough time, he will jump it, undercut it, and intercept it. And he did that perfectly. And all the passes that he's intercepted have all been that type of pass in that same area. Yep. And he almost had another one. Plummer dropped the ball again. There it comes out of the pack. The Vikings, I believe, had it. I think the Vikings recovered it. Yes, they did. Antonio Banks. And there was a frustration flag came out of there too. Big discussion going on. Minnesota got the fumble. Banks got recovered the fumble. I see. Just what it says, Ben. It, the, the ball came up there, and, yeah. and Jake Plummer didn't close his hands on it. That was the first part of that thing. The Vikings recovered, and then this. The fumble is recovered by Minnesota. After the recovery, we have a personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 75, with the enforcement. Number 75, that Lomas. was Lomas Brown. Brown again. He's the left tackle who's been doing such a good job out there on John Randall. You see the snap, Plummer just didn't close his hands. The ball's there on the ground. Then it comes out, the Vikings recover it. And here comes Lomas Brown right there. You can see that the official is saying no. Now watch Larry Centers here, what he does at the bottom of the pile. That's what I said. Those were frustration yep. penalties. Yes. Lomas Brown was frustrated, and Larry Centers was frustrated. 
two veterans you wouldn't expect to do things like that. Well, and Jake Plummer fumbled his snap that started it all. Cunningham incomplete. Carter, the intended receiver. You see how calm he is? I mean, yeah. even, even when he does it, he knows that he could have had it or we'll get it later. And we talked about stiff hips and making and moves. This is the type of thing that Chris Carter thought that he could do to Corey Chavis, but Corey Chavis really played that one well. He sure did. Corey Chavis was a rookie number one draft choice. They started him this year as a strong safety, had trouble at corner, and finally moved him out and started him at that left corner. And they say you can see him getting better and better every day. Hard. And a flag on the play. One of the problems of playing corner on the other side of Aeneas Williams is they're always going to stay away from Aeneas Williams and throw at you. You're going to get a lot of action. You don't see this penalty a lot. Just, it looked like he, Tom White was saying it's a tripping penalty. Yeah, I think so. Mitch Tobin doesn't agree. Tripping. Number 91. Defense. Now they have the distance to the goal. First the shot swinger. You wonder how a guy in the middle that's just kind of flopping around there in the middle can trip. And you can just see him here. He just must throw his leg out right there. That's exactly what he does. He yep. throws his right leg out. That's what happens when you when you miss and you're that big. I mean, you can't get back up and you have all your weight going one way. The only thing you can do is flop a leg out there. That's first, exactly what he did. First and goal with the two. Carter in motion. And Cunningham looking and finding Randy Moss for a Minnesota six. Out there. You see, because of the motion, Aeneas Williams gets off him. And that's exactly what they wanted. And then the strong safety, Tommy Bennett, has to get on him. So, so that, that was a pretty good thing by putting Chris Carter out there. That took Aeneas Williams off of Randy Moss. And Randy Moss scored the touchdown and then posed for the photographers. And well, Randy Moss is going to do a lot of things that you've never seen before in the NFL. This could be one of them. Yeah. Randall Cunningham, what a year. I mean, who would have thought? Here was a guy that was a couple of years ago, he'd retired. Yeah. He had a marble business in Las Vegas. And he was working it. He even said, I didn't enjoy the game. I dreaded going to practice. I dreaded going. I hated it. And he ran into Denny Green at one of the bowl games. And then he said, uh, hey, you're too young to be giving this game up. You're too young to quit. How about coming back? They brought him back as a potential backup to Brad Johnson. He got hurt. And the rest of the story is a phenomenal story. And then I think, you know, part of that gift is coming back was Randy Moss. Yeah. And, you know, Randy Moss being a rookie, number one draft choice, not drafted until the 21st pick of the first round. A lot of teams passed on him, obviously. And yeah. Randall Cunningham said, hey, this is something pretty good here. And he started chucking it deep to him, and, and the rest of that is history, too. That was Randy Moss's eighth consecutive game with a touchdown reception. Berger drives Metcalf to the back of the end zone, and he stays there. The countdown continues for Super Bowl 33 and the Progressive Auto Insurance Super Bowl 33 halftime show featuring Stevie Wonder, Gloria Estefan, and Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. That's Sunday, January 31st on Fox. I didn't know that there was that many Big Bad Voodoo Daddies around because you know, we have the all Madden team. We got guys yeah. out here. We got Jerry Ball playing like that. I mean, we got a lot of big bad voodoo daddies. And it's not just yeah. one, but they're probably all going to be there at the Super Bowl anyway. I would imagine. Led by Stevie Wonder. Here's Plummer. Drops it out to Morrell. 
Pretty good move. Bad tackling. A couple of pretty good moves. Morrell at the Minnesota 41, stopped finally by Robert Griffith. Who's the best tackler back there? I mean, that was a good run by Adrian Morrell, but it was it was some real poor tackling because the Vikings have him have him surrounded there. I mean, they have all kinds of guys. Watch him converge here. Now the guy that is going to finally get him is Robert Griffith. He's going to come all the way across the field. He was in position to miss him the first time. Morrell again. And then anytime you know you see Robert Griffith up there when a team starts running on you they use Robert Griffith like another linebacker now because he had to play more pass defense we talked about this yeah. earlier he lost eight pounds this week he'll play a running team at 200 he's playing today's game at 192 pounds and he got he's got ways of doing it Jake Plummer under heavy pressure couldn't get much on it. 18 seconds left in the third quarter. And there was good coverage out there by Jimmy Hitchcock. I mean, there was nothing there, so so Jake Plummer just threw that ball away. And you see the effect. You see, even the corners with this no huddle or at the line huddle, even the corners don't come to the huddle. They just stay out there in the side. See, Jimmy Hitchcock stays on his side, Corey yeah. Fuller stays on their side. Then they all look to the sideline to Foge Fazio, who signals in the defense to him. Here comes the flag. You saw the play clock. Yep, and you give this this one to the crowd. Yep. Third down. And that's that's the thing that the Cardinals were talking about before this game is, you know, is the crowd and how you take them out and how you're going to do your snap count, your start count, all those things. And of all those things, the situation that they worried most about was that right there, the yep. third down, and specifically this shotgun that they're in right now. Jake. Here comes the blitz. He's going deep. Intended for more, but again, because of the pressure, he couldn't get much on it. And you see the way they're, they're, when you get this crowd, the thing that they decided to do was a silent count. And the silent count is off the center. Now watch, when the center lifts his head, after he lifts his head, they're going to go 1,001. He lifts his head, 1,001, and he snaps the ball. That's yeah. their silent count. When, when his head is down, there's no count. He lifts it, 1,001, ball is snapped. Graham, the center. This didn't do any good. This this game is just about just about way too much Minnesota offense. They let the clock run down. The Cardinals were ready to punt it, and Palmer is back deep for Minnesota. You know, it's funny. I think I think the Viking offense has gotten to the Cardinal defense, and the defense has gotten to the offense, and the kicking team has gotten to the game, and the crowd. The crowd has played yeah. pretty well too. You know, I didn't understand when I first heard the schedule why the Cardinals didn't come in here a day early and get a workout at the dome. And if you're going to get comfortable, because you can't put the crowd in here, you can't simulate that no matter what noise you put in. But at least uh, have a look at it and get the feel of it. I always believed in that. I always did when I was coaching. We always practiced at the stadium we were going to play in the day before we played. They got here, what, 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Practiced in uh, Arizona. Well, next, know, excuse uh, me. No, I was just going to say next week the team does have to come in. Yeah. It'll be uh, the Atlanta Falcons if the Minnesota Vikings continue here. And then the league runs a championship game. Then they have press conferences and everything. So, so the visiting team, the Atlanta Falcons, will have to come in here on Friday. Wouldn't be quite the same for the. It won't be quite the same for the Atlanta Falcons if indeed that happens, because they also play in a dome. Yeah, but they're going to be on the other side yeah. of the noise factor. That's very true. It's Robert Smith, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Yeah, the Cardinals used a five-man defensive line on that play because they're anticipating runs. The end of the third quarter with the score, the Vikings 34, the Cardinals 14. 
This Fox NFC divisional game will continue after a word from your local Fox station. That picture tells the story about as well as the scoreboard does. 34 to 14, Minnesota. Second and seven for the Vikings. Cunningham. Under pressure, throws for his fullback. Game complete. You know, you know, it's interesting here. We're in the fourth quarter, but Randall McDaniel's man never gets any penetration. No. You know, we just talk about about how strong he is and, and he just gets you know great position and he has great leverage and he's so strong that he just keeps his guy right at or around the line of scrimmage. And that stance where he puts his left foot flat on the ground just never seen anything quite like that and there's no one else that can do what he does in that stance. That's right. Cunningham going deep. Too deep. Jake Reed, the intended target. Jake stopped and looked back, and the ball went sailing over. And for the first time today, Minnesota is going to have to punt. And I think that now Brian Billick and Denny Green want to get Jake Reed a little work because, you know, we talked about his back yeah. injury, his back surgery, as a matter of fact. And the thing they were worried about Jake Reed is he'd be a little rusted because it's been so long since he's played. So. They wanted to get him into this game, get a little rust off, but not in the most important part of the game. Metcalf. He could put, put him right back into it. Metcalf pushed out of bounds by Berger at about the 24. Berger just got the shove on Terry Metcalf. Yeah, but if he didn't get the shove, then Berger wouldn't have been talked about as a player. Remember, he said, don't. Talk about all the, all the candy bars and stuff because I'm a pretty good player too. And here he gets a chance. There's no one here. He becomes the last guy, number 17 on Metcalf, and he takes an angle because you know he doesn't have that kind of speed, and that's a heck of a play by a punter. I mean, he's smart here by getting where Metcalf's going to go, not where he's been. I brought Terry Metcalf back into the guy, Eric Metcalf. Well, you had his dad in I there. Had his dad in there. Back yeah. the last time they were in a, in a in a playoff game, his dad was playing. That's true. Adrian Morrell gets about five. You know, one of the things that that Mark Tressman said last night is is that most of us have never been where we're about to go, and you kind of feel that that was prophetic. That you know they're playing that way too. Yeah. That. They're going into an area in a playoff game, and very few of these Cardinals have ever been in a playoff game. Well, as they said, they were not going to be intimidated, and I think they were a little bit in the beginning. Well, I think they were intimidated by the ease that the Minnesota Viking offense moved the ball and by the crowd. Yeah. But I like this offense. I mean, the Cardinals are, you know, someone asked me if this is just a fluke thing them being here if this is just the start of something pretty good I think for the Cardinals it's a start of something pretty good because of number 16 and they're young and they got some speed too. Morrell tried to cut at about the eight Robert Griffith made the stop yeah, you see there's coach Fazio now he's not using the wristband he's using hand signals and again that's because of the no huddle I mean they're giving him huddle they're giving him no huddle they're giving him quick huddle and he's just signaling in and every player the defense is not getting in the huddle they're all looking over at Foge. Sanders and Moore both right caught by Moore well, how he got that Flag. ball off as you said he threw it to his right but did he get a big blitz from his left, including Robert Griffin? Flag on the play. And it's probably hitting the quarterback, but but what did he get a heavy blitz from his left side, his backside, away from the side he was throwing to? There was a jailbreak over there. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Yep. Number 24 defense. With a forearm to the back of the head. That, the number 24 is Griffith there, and that's what they called. You see that forearm to yeah. the back of the head? Sure did. And it was there. Tom White saw that the whole way. 
And now while that was happening to Jake Plummer where he's getting forearmed to the back of the head, he still made that throw to the side away from the forearm to the back of the head. First and goal at the one. Flag on the play. When we talk about the playoff games, 12 teams get in the playoffs. Ball start. Right guard on the offense. Five yards. The first down. Still a first down, but they'll move it back five yards. I was just saying 12 teams get into yep. playoffs, and 11 of those teams are going to lose their last game. And that's what brings the intensity of these games up is the finality of it. You know, you get to a point where time runs out on you. And then frustration sets in because you know the finality. First and goal at the six. Jake under pressure again, intended for Getney. Dixon Edwards on the blitz. You know, one of the things that you know was so big for the Cardinals and Jake Plummer was his moving to the right or to the left in the bootlegs and. He said they really started taking that away from him by coming hard up the field like Dixon Edwards just did there and, and makes him stay in the pocket. You see you're going to see as he starts to come out here to his right you see the minute he fakes and turns there's Dixon Edwards yep. and he said before before earlier they wouldn't bring that guy hard away from play action where he could bootleg you and can, now now they're bringing that guy hard. You could tell that he couldn't hear what was coming from the sideline. So this is a Cardinal timeout. They only have one left. Minnesota leads 34-14. 34-14, the Vikings. Plummer on a quick count. Looks in zone incomplete. Intended for more. You know the the Cardinals have what they call a movement package and that's that's exactly what that was and Jake Plummer was saying in the movement package they have about 10 play and there's different kind of movements you have the bootleg where the back goes one way and you fake the other way and you have the rollout like that was where the back leads and goes the same way that you're going but they have 10 plays in a movement package which will always be good for Jake Plummer third and goal at the six Jake. <laughs> Gets his pass just at the left to Frank Sanders fumble. The Vikings throw it back there. Santa was down. What a throw by Jake Plummer. Yeah. Again, that's why they're calling the snake. That was, I don't know. I don't know how many guys could make that play. Brett Favre, maybe. I don't know who else. I mean, he is there. And, and watch this. They have him. And he's just going to flip that ball. I mean, why watch him? He starts back. He almost falls down. He comes up. He throws a jump pass. Jump pass. As the guy's around his knees, it completes it to Frank Sanders. And the ball hit the ground. Sanders didn't get in. It's fourth and goal at the one. Second effort. Bates came close. Touchdown. The official on the side came storming in with his hands in the air. The ball must have broken the plane. Yeah, it did. And in fact, if it did, that's Bates' third touchdown, isn't it? You're going to see him start here to the left, then he gets a lead back to the right, and he's just stopped there. He stopped there by Rudd. In fact, Rudd starts to celebrate and lets him go, and Mario Bates is still playing. Yep. Now, again, the key is, did the, did the ball cross the plane of the goal line? So you have to see it's not when his knee goes down where's the ball you don't see his knee down yet and you don't see the ball yet either but the rule is maybe when it's his, in this view when his knee goes down where's the ball does the ball break the plane they kicked the extra point so in the opinion of the officials it did and the Cardinals tack on another touchdown an extra point 34 21 11 45 left. Back at the Metrodome, Minnesota 34, Arizona 21, 11, 45 left. Certainly enough time left for Jake the Snake to work some magic. Well, you know, and we saw him work yeah. that magic. Remember yeah. down in Arizona in that second half of the Dallas Cowboy game? David Palmer. Champions 
championship game next week, either here or in Atlanta. Atlanta will oppose one of these two, Minnesota or the Arizona Cardinals. John, you, if it's here, you're going to stay all week. Yeah, I'm going to stay all week, and I'm going to do some of those things. You know, some of those pictures we had of people doing stuff in the snow and yeah. fishing and going down to Austin and all that stuff. I'm going to do all that stuff this week. So, which, which one of those things are you going to do? Well, I'm going to do all of it. So if you're looking for me and you can't find me, that's where I am. Pass from Cunningham to Andrew Glover is complete out to about the 30. That's right. You were. I guess this is pretty well known. You were born up here. Yeah, I was born. I was born in Austin, Minnesota. I guess that's why you're going there. Yeah, and you know, Minnesota plays a big part in my life. I uh, was from my mother, my father, born here. You know, my family, my mother's family, the the whole group. So it's Madden Country. Boy, did Jeff Christie make a block. We gotta look at that one yeah. again. Jeff you Christie is one of the centers who can pull. Yeah. You don't see centers pulling a lot, but when you do see a center pull, then you have to watch it. And then when the center pulls and makes a block, watch Jeff Christie here, and then doink, right there he makes that block, then you gotta show that yep. one again. Yep. I mean, poor old centers, all they do is you know bend over and snap the ball all day, but when they make a play like that, as you say, there's not a heck of a lot of them in the football that can do what Jeff Christie just did. Ronald McKinnon was Christie's victim. First and ten. Well, they try to lock down as far as they can. Room for Robert Smith to pick his way. And that was right at a blitz. They tried to run a split six blitz, which is hitting both holes. They're going to blitz right into this area. But again, Jeff Christie, you see, he turns and he just picks up Miller right there. In fact, he gets him going away, and then he cuts him, and Robert Smith ran right at the blitzers. Or the blitzers ran right by or were cut right by Robert Smith. Hard replaces Smith. Now Smith has gained 102 yards. He got his 100 in this playoff game. Cunningham drops. Incomplete intended for Glover. Now the Cardinals were in an interesting defense, Pat. They use it a lot. In fact, they used it a lot against the Cowboys last week, that five defensive line. Yeah. And we talk about Christie and the things that he does. He sees the five defensive line. Now, now, now watch him and listen as he makes his calls. a lot of things. Yeah, well, he saw that five-man line, so they had to man pass protect, so he was yelling out man. Randy Moss makes the catch from Cunningham and gets the Vikings a first down across the 50. Yeah, they, no, excuse me, go ahead. No, I was just saying, those are the types of things I think they have to do to Randy Moss. I think that you know, you'll get him on intermediate passes, get him on some inside routes, and then get him even on some crossing routes. And then he will be he will be lethal in this league. Moss and Carter are split left. Five man line again. We got the bear look in the middle. Here's Smith. Simeon Rice tripped him up. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner, directed by Sandy Grossman. Associate Director is Mike Roig. The broadcast associates are Fran Morrison and Charles McDonald. Rich Nelson's our stage manager. Technical producer is Bob Muller. Technical director, Joe Abenda. And we'll get to the rest in just a moment. Second and seven. Blitz coming. Ooh, and that was a perfect call because yep. they ran Leroy Horde right into the blitz. You know, it was either a, a bad offensive call by the Vikings or a great defensive call by the Cardinals because they blitzed right into the hole where the Vikings were running. Yes. 
third and eight. Big yep. down for the Cardinals right here. That was Dave McGinnis, yep. who's the defensive coordinator of this Cardinal team, who a lot of people are talking about as maybe someday being a head coach. Yes. One of many assistants being mentioned. They leaned. I don't know if they went offsides or not. Yes, they did. Cunningham keeps the ball and he's going to run it. He's a little short of the first down. Andre Wadsworth made the tackle, but the flag as the Cardinals jump. Well, Randall uh, Cunningham was saying the other day that if they use a lot of man coverage or blitz, he says, I'm going to have to run because zone, you're watching the quarterback, so it's not a good time for the quarterback to run. Man to man, because you're covering a man, most of the time you will turn your back to the quarterback, so that's the best time for him to run. Randall was saying it looks like these guys are going to play us in a lot of man so I'm going to be ready to do a lot of running and he's just done just enough today to keep them effective. Offside defense number 97 to five yard penalty will replay third down. Just continuing with those who are responsible for what you see and what you hear. Technical producers Bob Muller, technical director Joe Abenda, who's the audio supervisor is Fred Aldis. Studio is produced by Scott Atkinson, directed by Bob Levy. Cardinals again showing a blitz. Cunningham retreats, gets the ball to Moss. What a play! Yeah. I mean, that's fun. That's like you do it in the playground. I mean. Randall Cunningham is sprinting out. He's scrambling, and he just throws the ball. Randy Moss just grabs it out of the air. And grab is a perfect term to describe it. Snatch it out of the but air. Watch, it just starts out here, and that's a sprint out. Randall Cunningham throws the ball on the run. Now, 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 now watch on this end. Watch what Randy Moss does. I and mean, he just reaches out both hands and grabs that ball out of there. Because, you know, this guy, I mean, he is so big, and he's so fast. He runs a 40 and 4.2. And he's also a lot stronger than you think he is. And he's taller than you think he is. And I think he's tall to begin with. Yeah, he's like 6'5". Yeah. I mean, when he gets up, you have to look up to him and say, hello, Mr. Moss. I didn't hear you say that. No, I didn't. 34-21, Minnesota. <laughs> First and 10, Minnesota. With the clock about to be starting again. The handoff is to Robert Smith. You know, David Dixon, the right guard of the Vikings, is yeah. so big and strong. I mean, he's over 350 pounds. And when he gets his body on you, I mean, look look, look at those arms and shoulders. I mean, he just got his body on, on some guy and just put him right on his back. I mean, and that's the side that they run to. And we talk about this offensive line, how, how they've been doing so well the whole game. But now they're just dominating. I mean, they're they hitting guys and the next thing that hits is the back of their heads. And the helmet doesn't look, look like it's quite uh, adequate. Either has too much head or not enough helmet. There's Smith again. Cut down by Carl Simpson. And again that was Randall McDaniel making that hole. You know when Randall McDaniel was a senior senior at Arizona State and they won the Rose Bowl and he was the MVP and he was all American he was all this and they had a rally after and they got him up there to give a speech you know and they thought that he was going to say what well, he you know what was your proudest accomplishment and he said you know that would be about football or blocking or yeah. something he said the proudest accomplishment that I've had in my life is from kindergarten through high school I never missed a day of school that's, pretty, uh, that's something to be proud of here's Hall making yardage out of what looked to be a loss and keeping the clock running. But they got a rumble going yeah. on down there. As fact, if there might have been a fumble. Remember there was a, a rumble with an umpire and a player. This is the same umpire. Remember that where yeah. he just grabbed the guy and just bulldogged him to the ground. Well number five sky. I remember seeing that in a highlight film. 
Dave McGinnis is saying, what in the heck can we do to stop this offensive machine of these Vikings? They have tried everything, and so have a lot of people. And nobody has, except Tampa Bay, and they kept the ball all the time. That's and you, hard. And you wonder what the Atlanta Touchdown. Falcons are thinking. Leroy Hard into the end zone again. If you need one, I'll get you three. Leroy Hort did. Nine-year veteran from Michigan. What a combination of Robert Smith, the speed and the slasher and the power of Leroy Hort. And we talk about guys that have had big games every time we've seen them. Yep. And Leroy Hort is one of those guys. He certainly is, isn't he? I like him. Anderson has another extra point that's perfect. And the Vikings tack on to their lead 41 to 21. Minnesota 41, Arizona 21. Just over four and a half minutes left for the Vikings to host the championship game against Atlanta. Next Sunday early, and we'll be here. Berger. Metcalf can't get the bounce and downs it in the end zone. Next Sunday, our coverage begins at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Atlanta against these Vikings. All the home teams won this weekend. And while this one's not over yet, but it certainly looks as if those people will capture this title well, you or know the why right the, to cap, try to capture the title in the NFC. The reason the home teams win is because the home teams deserve to be home teams by having the best winning record. And in the regular season, they were the better teams. And they've got the crowd on their side. And that has become... It seems to me over the years a bigger a bigger factor is the fans have become more educated. Yeah, and you just look at this crowd. I was yeah. just thinking of that, you know, while we were away there in this crowd and they were singing and making music and dancing and and this place to me was kind of dull over the years, but this has become a very festive place now. Next weekend, the 1998 postseason fact, the four teams in the next week's conference championship have a combined 59 and 9 record. Minnesota with the best, Atlanta with the second best. They'll be here. Denver tied with Atlanta with a 15 and 2 record, and the Jets 13 and 4. And that's Love the way it. it should be. Oh, good hit. Larry Centers. And this is a good hitting weather. You can hear it now. You can hear it from Antonio, here. Antonio Banks. But you know, Pat, you were looking at those records and talking about those teams, and there's a certain purity about that. And, and that's what makes regular season games so big and so important that if you win your regular season games, then you're going to be more successful in the playoffs. And you hate to see teams that didn't that would get in and, you know, and win things. Plummer gets it outside the centers again who gets first down. You wonder how Larry Centers, who's been such a good player, solid player for so many years for the Cardinals. Finally, they get to the playoffs. They beat Dallas last week, the first time they're in the playoffs. And now they're going to be eliminated. And uh, it's got to be just heartbreaking. But as you said, the Cardinals look like a team that are just coming on. Yeah, they're a team on the rise, and and the reason is to me is, as you said, they have some speed, they have some you know young players, they have a good coach and a good staff with Vince Tobin. But to me, the guy is Jake Plummer. I mean, he's the real deal, and Jake Plummer is going to be a superstar in this league. And you talk about the great quarterbacks and so on. He is going to be, or has a heck of a chance to be one of the next. Ones. Has such a, as you said earlier, such a great feel for things. He knows how to play the game. Yeah. And the thing I like about him, he has fun playing it too. 
Down the middle, Florida Sanders. There's another guy who seems to enjoy playing too, Frank Sanders. Yeah, he's a good guy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and you know, and you talk about you know guys that you know have big games whenever you see them. Frank Sanders is one of those guys. There's Aeneas Williams there in the left, and boy, a tough changed. job call covering Randy Moss, but he did a good job. Randy Moss's touchdown, uh, Aeneas Williams wasn't on him. Moore takes the pass from Plummer. We're about to get the two-minute warning until he got out of bounds. You know, you wonder what Atlanta is thinking, and, and they're probably on one hand saying, well, what an offensive machine. I have no idea what we're going to do against that offense, but defensively they're saying, hey, you know, you can do some things to this team defensively. And yeah, you know, I mean, I mean their defense yeah. is your offense. We were talking about the home field and the home team advantage and the home field, the home team winning every game this weekend. The last 10 years in the championship game, that's next week's game. The home team is only six and four. Here's Plummer. Gonna go deep and watch it sail out of the bounds. This is a guy that the Vikings, uh, you'd wonder how as well as Randall Cunningham has played, they'd feel the need to sign another quarterback. It's Brad Johnson, who and was the starter when and, they signed. And he'll be, they already have him signed. I mean, they're gonna keep Brad Johnson, you know. People say that you know Randall Cunningham had such a great year, which yeah, but that doesn't mean you get rid of Brad Johnson. Right. As Denny Green said, that's that's a luxury. And when you get a guy like Randall Cunningham and you have a guy like Brad Johnson, you do everything in your power to keep both of them, and there's no need to get rid of one of them. And I don't think there's any way the Vikings will. Brother, to Morrell. Well, Denny Green also said, there's no question in anybody's mind connected with the team. We wouldn't be 15 and one if we didn't have both of them. Two minutes left at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. The Vikings up by 20 points. Two minutes left at the Metrodome in Minnesota, 41-21. A methodical performance by the Vikings who. You know what that drawing was, Pat, that we just saw there? That was an onside kick prevent. In other words, if if Arizona scores score. here, Minnesota's going to use an onside kick prevent. That one could have been intercepted. Well, that's one thing about coaching. You know, you're never coaching for the moment. You're always coaching ahead. You, you know, better play be. callers are thinking of the next play. Special teams coaches are thinking, you know, if they score, then we have to be an onside prevent. And you always have to be ahead. You can't coach for the now because if you're coaching for the now, it's too late. If you're coaching for the now, you're going to lose a lot. Plummer out of the shotgun. Fourth down. Rushes on. He gets away from two. Finally throws it out to the side. Incomplete. And the Vikings will take over. The Cardinals can only stop the clock once. And one timeout remaining. And the happiest guy down there in the side. Well, there's a lot of happy guys yeah. down on that Viking sideline, but the guy that was out in the field was the defensive line coach, Andre Patterson. He was out there saying, We got him, we got him. You know, fourth down, he wanted the big pass rush. He went out and got it. I'll tell you, this this is a great feeling, but you know, you you don't want to get too excited about yourself on this because you know that you can enjoy it tonight you can enjoy it maybe a little but doggone next week those Atlanta Falcons are coming in and there's only one game after this between you and the Super Bowl first to ten Minnesota Robert Smith adds to his total I'll tell you one thing Denny Green's going to do, he's going to keep those guys in there. I mean, he's keeping Randall Cunningham in there, and he has Robert Smith running the ball. He'll bring in Horde now because it's shorter yardage, but there's no way. When you get this close, yep. and you're this close to a championship game, you're not going to do anything stupid that's ever going to let it get out of your hands. I think, you know, the time and the score, there's no way it can, but as you're a coach, that old saying, it's never over until it's over, 
you don't care. You know, if someone say hey, it's over, there's no way. Baloney, it's over. When they shoot that gun off, then it's over. It's hard. And he plows for enough for another first down, and that should just about do it. Or had some moves on yes, that. He had he a little did. swerve on there. Shaking a few things. Yeah, usually he just, boom, he just takes it up there and pounds it in there. Coming up, the Burger King postgame report, J.B. Terry, Howie and Chris, Chuck Smith, the defensive end from Atlanta, Rod Smith, the wide receiver from the Denver Broncos. Interviews with those two. Fox Sports ticker will bring you up to date on stats. And now all Randall Cunningham has to do is take a knee. They had to get Robert Smith on from this game. Yeah. All the Smiths. Yeah. Denny Green, what a job he's done. Bring, Bring on the dirty birds. Hey, we ought to go on stage. Yep. And it's going to be right. It's going to be the NFL on Fox, and we'll be here next week. And can't wait for that one. We're coming back here with interviews from some of the players, some of the participants, Pam Oliver and Ron Pitts, down on the field to catch him. Vikings by 20. Final score at the Metrodome, Minnesota 41, Arizona 21. Pam Oliver visited with head coach Denny Green. Let's go down now. All right, thanks a lot, Chuck. Vikings did it's always very businesslike, and I'm sure you just see this as another step in the progression. Tell me though, it's got to mean something. It's got to be pretty exciting. What well, is? I mean, our guys are real sharp. I mean, that's really the key thing. We said that all along. We took good advantage of the time off. We came back. We played very well on this surface, and I think the challenge next week will to continue what we've been doing. But the guys played hard all out. You look at the scoreboard. A bit of a lopsided victory for you. Are you satisfied though with the team's play overall? Oh, I thought we played. Yeah, we're always satisfied when we win. We really are. We know this. I mean, the game is not a perfect game, but anytime we win, we're satisfied. But uh, we know that we have a lot more to do, and so that's really what it's all about. We'll go back, and we'll have a regular week next week. We know how to have a countdown. We'll try to finish it right here. Let's look ahead to next week, the Atlanta Falcons. What kind of challenges do they present? Well, great running game. I think anytime you can run in the National Football League, you probably win. We ran the day we won, so I think that's going to be the challenge for us, keeping everybody on their feet, trying to shut it down getting everybody into it, just playing another great game. And we have not played our best game yet. We have to play better next week. This will probably be the best team we've played all year. All right, thanks a lot, Dennis. Appreciate it. This play of the game brought to you by Burger King. And Leroy Hard, who scored three. This is his second coming up from Randall Cunningham. He and the Vikings had a big day. So for John Madden, Pat Summerall saying stick with us. We're going to James Brown in the studio.